The five types of processes we have discussed so far dealt with manufacturing processes. But what about service processes? For that, let us again go back to our basic diagram. Here we can still see the line flow versus flexible flow ends of the diagonal. However, instead of make to stock versus make to order, we can think in terms of a standardized service versus a customized service. Expanding on this diagram further, we can identify three kinds of processes. On the upper left hand side of the diagonal, we have a front end process. On the lower right hand side, we have a back end process. In the middle, we have a hybrid process. We call this the customer contact matrix. That's interesting. How come all our service processes have something to do with the amount of customer contact involved? Could it be that customer contact is an important characteristic of a service process? Notice what we are implying here. As customer contact increases, the process moves up the diagonal towards greater customization and employs a more flexible process. Is that necessarily true? Suppose I walk into a fast food restaurant. I ask for something, but the server says, I'm sorry, sir, but that item was on the breakfast menu. It is no longer available because it is lunchtime. I say, oh, come on, you can do it, just this once. I know you have it in the back. I used to work at a place like this. Just give it to me and I won't tell a soul. I'm sorry, sir, I can't do that. It's company policy. What nonsense are you talking? I'm the customer and haven't you heard? The customer is king. Are you telling me you can't give me something that we both know is stocked in the back? I'm sorry, sir, it's company policy. I demand to speak to the manager. The manager comes along in a few minutes and repeats the same policy. You call yourself a manager? Do you even know the ABCs of customer service? I demand to speak to your boss. I'm not leaving this place until I get some service around here. I'm in half a mind to throw a tantrum and call you some choice names, but I'm not going to give you the easy way out of calling the cops. Okay, what just happened here? Besides the long line of restless customers that is building up behind me, here is a restaurant that is trying to streamline their process to match their competitive priorities of, say, cost and delivery speed. They have even restricted their menu in order to reduce process divergence. But just the presence of a wildcard customer like me has created a whole lot of process divergence, hasn't it? Forget about the server at the counter. What about a process that I don't even come into contact with? How about the guy in the back preparing the fries? Did you see him? I can tell just by the look on his face that he's up to no good. Oh my goodness, he is spitting into the food. All you customers here, that guy is spitting into the food. Don't eat the food. Call the health department. As you can see, it doesn't take much customer contact to increase process divergence. In a manufacturing process, you as the manager can select your equipment, select, train and reward your employees, etc. That gives you a lot of control over how the process behaves. In a service setting, however, there is a whole different element called the customer that you don't control. Just the fact that the customer can see you is enough to introduce process divergence. Customer contact is not just a binary yes-no variable necessitating a front-end or back-end process. Rather, we need to look at several dimensions. Let us say I go into a bank and cash a check at the teller. I also talk to a loan specialist to get a mortgage. Both of these processes involve customer contact, so let us put them down as front-end processes. But do these two processes really occupy the same location on the diagonal? Let us look at the two processes in terms of several dimensions of customer contact. The first one is customer presence. Well, I am present in both, so on a scale of 1 to 5, I guess both processes get a 5. Another dimension is what is processed, me or my possessions or information. The teller said, good morning, how can I help you? Then he offered me a candy while he went about looking at his computer screen. He was certainly processing my information and cash more than he was processing me. On a scale of 1 to 5, I guess that's a 1.5. The loan specialist, on the other hand, walked up to meet me, shook my hand, offered me coffee and cookies, offered me a comfortable seat at her desk, talked about the weather, asked about the family, etc. It was almost as if she could read my mind and knew that I was anxious about this whole loan business and was helping me get my pulse rate down to a more manageable level. 
Then she walked me step by step through the loan application process. On a scale of 1 to 5, I guess that's a 4.5. On the other hand, if she had said, fill out these forms and bring them back to me when you're done, perhaps that would have been a 2.6. The next dimension is contact intensity. Both processes were visible to me. The teller said, can I help the next customer? And I stepped forward. Hand me the check. Here it is. Can I see some ID? Here it is. Please swipe your card and enter your PIN. Here you go. Sign here. OK. Do you want 20s or 50s? Whatever. Count your cash? Aye, aye, sir. Now am I really being active or just passively following orders? Does 1.5 on a scale of 1 to 5 sound reasonable? On the other hand, how active or passive am I in the process of configuring a loan to my needs? Does 4.0 sound reasonable? In terms of personal attention, the teller was, of course, polite, but he really paid more attention to the computer than to me. OK, let's make that a 2.0. The loan specialist, on the other hand, insisted on asking me all sorts of personal questions about my social security number, years at my job, family, dependents, etc. How about a 4.7? A final dimension is method of delivery. Both the processes were face-to-face, -face, so let's give them both 5.0. The total for the teller process works out to 15.0. The total for the loan process works out to 23.2. These numbers are on a scale of 5 to 25 possible points. Going back to our diagram, we cannot simply treat both these processes as front office processes and put them on the same spot on the diagonal. Rather, according to our analysis, the teller process must fall much lower down the diagonal. Expanding on this discussion, suppose when I went to the teller, he politely escorted me to an ATM and proceeded to show me how to deposit my check there, withdraw cash, etc. Clearly, this bank has decided that its teller process is too high up on the diagonal and needs to be moved further down to the right. On the other hand, suppose I go to a bank and proceed towards the ATM. A bank employee rushes up to my side, invites me in, and proceeds to manually process my transaction. I begin to wonder whether I am the 5 millionth customer of the year or something special like that. Basically, here is a bank that is trying to move the process up the diagonal. Perhaps they have heard from their customers that their processes are too impersonal. Or maybe they are trying to differentiate themselves from the competition by providing a high-touch service.